Hey, it's ACAP. Today you're going to learn how to set a static IP address. This has many applications, but I'm going to focus specifically on connecting a client machine running logic to a server machine running a Vienna Ensemble Pro server project. First, hardwire both computers to your router via ethernet. Next, access your router settings in your browser by navigating to its address. Most likely this will be 192.168.0.1, but if this doesn't work, check your router's manual or call your internet service provider. Every router's login page and settings are going to look slightly different but should use similar terms. If you're unsure about something that's different in your settings from mine, again, consult your router's manual or contact your ISP. If you've never logged into your router before, your username and password may be something basic like admin and password, or it may be something more complex. The initial settings for this should have come with your router's documentation or might be on the router itself. Once you're logged in, you should see a navigation bar at the top with each page of settings and a sidebar of links related to that page. And while you're here, you might also change the username and password to something more meaningful to you, ideally something easy to remember but hard to guess. For my router, to get to the page where I can assign static IP addresses, I had to click on basic in the nav bar and then static lease in the sidebar. In your router settings, it might also be called a reserved IP address or a static IP address. Once you've found the page where you can reserve IP addresses, supply the information required to identify the machine you need to reserve the IP address for. In some cases, it may be as easy as selecting the device from a list but if you had to enter a MAC address like me, you can find that either in the device's system or network settings through your system's command line interpreters such as command prompt or terminal, or occasionally printed on the device itself. You'll need to use the Ethernet MAC address, not the Wi-Fi MAC address. I've provided some links in the description on how to find your computer's MAC address. Once you've identified the machine you wish to reserve an IP address for, enter the address you wish to reserve within the private IP range. If your router's address was 192.168.0.1, one, then your private IP range will most likely be from 192.168.0.2 to 192.168.0.254. If you like, you can pick a memorable or logical number, but you won't need to memorize it for the purposes of this video's application. If you choose an address that's already taken by another device on the network, after you apply your changes, you may need to disconnect and reconnect both devices from the network so your reserved address frees up. If the reserved address doesn't take effect even after that, you can try restarting both devices as well as the router, although it should take effect the next time that device with the newly reserved IP address connects to the router via Ethernet. To check that your static IP has taken effect, go to the Ethernet network settings on that device or find the client list in your router settings. I found this page under status in my settings. I've set a static IP for one client and one server, but if you have more than one server, repeat the previous steps for each machine. On your server machine, open a server project template in VE Pro or just add an instance and load some instruments in it. For help with your server project template and getting logic to connect to it, check out my previous VE Pro videos. I provided a link to that playlist in the description. On your client machine, open up whatever template you had that connects to VE Pro, or just make a software instrument track and add a VE Pro plugin. On your VE Pro plugin, set the buffer to two buffers. If you were using logic and VE Pro on the same machine, you'd be able to leave that at one buffer. When you hit connect, you should see the server's reserved IP addresses and its available instances. Choose the instance on your server to connect to and repeat for all other VE Pro plugin tracks. Now, when you save your logic template like this, it will open up already connected to your VE Pro server template and you won't have to manually connect it each time. Remember to load your VE Pro server project template first before you open logic. Having a static IP address for your server helps logic find the instances always in the same place. Otherwise, every time you turn your server on, its address would change since it would be dynamically assigned, which might cause you to have to manually connect to your VE Pro instances. Although you shouldn't need to view your VE Pro server project window that often, you can make this easier to do by allowing your server to share its screen. Then, even if your server is in a different room, you can quickly switch to the screen sharing view on your client machine. Another option for easily being able to work with both computers, if they are close enough together, is to buy a KVM switch. On your server machine, you'll need the Vienna Key e-licensor to run VE Pro server, as well as any other library and plugin licenses, such as iLock or machine-based licenses, for any instruments that will be loaded in your server project template. For any other license-based plugins and libraries you want to use directly in Logic, you'll need to move the respective machine-based licenses to your client machine, as well as any iLock licenses to a second iLock to be able to use them on your client. Before I sign off, I'd like to thank everyone who's bought PDFs so far. I appreciate the support and I'm glad they have been helpful to you. And since you can now rate products on Gumroad, it would be helpful for me and future viewers if you've downloaded or purchased a PDF 
for you to go back to the PDF product page or file download page and give it a rating. On my channel page, one of the links in the header image directs you to a page with all the PDF guides I've released thus far. You can either find the product page for all the guides you've downloaded or purchased there, or go to them from the individual video descriptions. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tutorials, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Check the description for more info, leave a comment if you need clarification, except for anything to do with your router, please refer to your manual or contact your ISP for that, and please share if you think this video can be helpful to someone else. Until next time, stay tuned.